John Stump, the CEO of Wells Fargo, was unceremoniously kicked out of his job because he was not likely aware of the problem that the bank employees opened fake accounts for customers. A leader would of course assume that the more accounts people opened with the bank, the more money they would manage and the better the customers felt about the bank. However, this metric drove employees to open fake accounts. You would think that the power in any organization lies with the top executives and you would not be faulted for doing so. They make the major decisions and guide the direction of the organization. However, that information they use to make the decision, is that correct? Let's take a look at a typical organization. People at the lower levels of the organizations are the ones that do most of the work. As you trace up the organizational structure, the focus shifts from doing work to managing that work. Managing work is an important role because that ensures that the work being done aligns with the company goals. As you trace even further, managing gives way to leadership and even more important decisions are supposed to be made at these levels. People who get promoted to these roles can do the work, they can manage people, and they can think strategically to make decisions that have broader implications. The nature of the organization structure creates silos. When information flows up these silos, there is a perception that the leader will be inundated with information and therefore the data we provide to them should be dumbed down. Not only that, as the information flows up the organization, it has to be vetted by many stakeholders, politically nuanced so no manager or leader is upset, generalized so that nuances are lost, and finally sanitized to avoid any finger pointing. Essentially, the information is useless. On the funny side of things, if a leader, say, asks how many inches there are in a foot, the answer that comes back will be caveated with words like tentative written all over it because employees are afraid to commit. If leaders want to get around that problem, the only option is that they could attempt to change the culture. Now that'll take a long time. Alternatively, they could go where the information is instead of waiting to get it from their subordinates. This direct access will ensure that they get the granularity desired. The only problem is they could be overwhelmed and after a couple of experiences of fighting through the clutter, they may give up. So what instead if we leverage pattern recognition to be the translator? The data is automatically collected and analyzed without any organizational biases and presented to the leaders in an unfiltered form. You may think that this is not feasible, but Google search is a quick example of how any user can type in a query and get the answers fast. Some organizations have already started working on automation and transparency, but we have a long ways to go. In the meantime, the role of a business architect, if structured correctly, can serve to bring the detailed data all the way up to leadership. The important thing for this role is to have independence much like auditors, and not be biased or influenced by organizational politics. Today, real decision makers are those that control and manage the information, so only what should flow up in their eyes goes up. The fallout from Wells Fargo fiasco is one example.